Megan. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Welcome to Spicy Brain Podcast, <laughs> where we navigate neurodiversity with curiosity, joy, and radical acceptance. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so today I want us to talk about a little, a little something. That was like really on the spot. That was like putting me on the spot. And I was just like, do I remember our tagline? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm glad you did because I totally spaced it. <laughs> I usually have my little index card up and I, you know, with things and I just have hey. it down. I had to put the pillow up, you know, that, you know, because I'm, I'm on pillows on either side of me, right? So yeah. Try to help with dampening the sound. That's I don't hilarious. Her, and anyway, so I didn't have my card up and I was like looking for it just now. And I was like, maybe <laughs> she'll remember. <laughs> that was awesome. Good job, buddy. Thank you. All Thank right. you. We love it. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to do a little uh, little thing I want to bring up. And um, this one I think actually is going to really focus on me for a change. Oh. Yeah, we're going to focus on my spicy part of my brain because this is all about flexibility. And you know me. And the flexibility is is a little a little bit of a challenge. It's elusive at times. Yes, yes. So again, we're we're looking at uh, Lisa Woodruff's book, and it is how ADHD affects home organization, right? Yes. And you've kind of been a fan of hers for a really long time, and you have her book. I love it. Yes. And if you're watching us, you can see Megan doing a beautiful job showing us the thing. And she was a former uh, school teacher, and so she's. I, th- I think her writing is really quite nice because it's, it really breaks things down. And she said there were those sort of like eight things about executive functioning. We, we talked about that on one of our podcasts. So flexible thinking is one of them. And again, mm-hmm. she defined it um, as adjusting to the unexpected. Someone who might struggle with this might have a hard time when someone changes plans at the last minute. Or something happens at the last minute. So I was going to think of like, what's, what's an example for you? And then I'm like, that is not your thing. Like you're totally fine. I don't, maybe you do have a, have it sometimes, but I don't think that's your natural state to be worried about plans changing. Yeah. I think towards like the really, maybe trauma filled time. That Mm. was for sure. Maybe an issue. My bigger issue is like, when I think about flexibility, I think about it as like, I have something planned Mm. and then I have to be flexible enough the day of to see that plan through. Oh, that's interesting. Does that make sense? No, but I'm really gonna <laughs> I'm really gonna be curious and listen. <laughs> so Okay, you have to be flexible enough with your own mind. You have to be well, flexible enough. Yeah, like so I never know what brain I am going to wake mm. up to. Mm. And there are days that I just don't wanna adult. I don't wanna yeah. like get up and the idea of getting together with somebody like if it's spontaneous great Mm. let's do that let's just like but to to like it it almost makes me a little fearful not a little it makes me like nauseous like to think (laughs) to to, like make a plan because then I have to I then I have to follow through with it and what if like like it's not flexible enough you know Uh. Got it. So like you're the, I can't, wait, I feel like I'm saying it backwards, but you're saying basically you're so flex, you're so flexible because you've had to be in a Maybe. way, like because of your brain. No, you're saying your brain kind of puts the structure of what's going to happen for the day or makes you want to do something a certain way or not do something. I don't maybe know. This, maybe this is the same thing, just a different spectrum of it. Okay. Same because way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna try my best. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't even really understand I feel what like I'm like saying. We just went into like a Christopher Nolan movie. Like we're like in the middle of Inception, <laughs> and we're not sure if this top is gonna stop spinning or Where not. Where is the like, top? Why? Yeah. Let's let's try to break this down. We make a plan to go see a movie. Uh huh. 
I then have to be flexible enough that if I do not want to see a movie on the day that we have said we're going to see the movie, I then have to be flexible enough to change the way I feel Mm. to then follow through with said plan. Or overcome or push through or whatever, right? Maybe you don't change it, but you're, oh, okay, that's interesting. All right, well, she's talking about, like, I think more literally, kind Mm. of you go to clean out your pantry. Yeah. And you need to figure out organizational supplies. You know, you need to, like, figure out how you're going to get your cans organized or something was one of her examples and Mm. I loved her her idea she said she uses one of those shoe caddies like one of the things that goes on the back side of the door Mm. is like what would hold your shoes and she puts the cans in that so you can always see everything and I was like that's cool but that's her concept of flexible thinking in this way and I'm like so you're kind of getting at more like flex flexibility within your emotional state Oh, so you're saying like flexibility within I'm going to use something for a totally different purpose. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's, or just, isn't that like what ADHD people do? I kind of thought so, but maybe not everyone does. So I was kind of curious if like other people in the community that, you know, identify as ADHD, I didn't know if that was just like our family growing up because I feel like Mm. we were weird, you know? I mean, well, (laughs) I mean- (laughs) Yes, we're weird also, but I I feel like we came from an engineering family, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah. And so we were always being asked to look at things and go, well, you know, how many different ways could you use this plate, you know, and can you make a hat? Could you make a, you know, toy gun? Can you make a, you know, flower? Like we always were being put in that position. Yeah. For whatever. I know. I was like so excited the the day that I figured out how to, I found a piece of I found something in dad's collection that mirrored or looked similar to a a zipper mm. clasp. And I was like, I fixed his pants because I was like, I found the little zipper tag that wasn't actually a zipper tag, but like I, I made it into one. And I remember like, I was so cool that day. Because <laughs> he, he thought you were cool. Yeah. He yeah. Was you like were look, we were looking, proud. we were looking for like, you know, some kind of acknowledgement that, you know, we were. Yeah, absolutely. So I think he was using a paper clip at that point and it wasn't it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't useful wasn't useful you did a better one I like it so okay so like the issue is like if you go in and and flexible thinking being like an executive functioning piece are you able to go in and go well I don't have the right thing for this organizational you know for my silverware Mm, you know, it doesn't, actually, it doesn't fit right or it doesn't whatever in this drawer. And can you be flexible to go find something different mm, that would allow it to still work? That actually does overwhelm me at times. Mm. I think that we've been trained to think, to not think that way. But my initial instinct is to get overwhelmed by it. Yes. Okay. So what can we dig into that a little bit? Like, what does that look like for you? Because I feel that way around plans sometimes yeah. with people, but I don't feel that way around like organizing my house. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. It, let's take the silverware as an example. You were saying that I was imagining the silverware, not having enough space. And then I just imagined the entire kitchen exploding. <laughs> What so, happened? so is this the like emotional regulation piece that maybe doesn't get that's the executive <laughs> functioning of like maybe take it to the logical illogical conclusion probably okay, so 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 you don't have the right silverware thing and the entire kitchen like must now be destroyed, destroyed. <laughs> there's just no coming back from it you're just done you're done you might as well move to a different planet <laughs> because it's never gonna work out <laughs> and maybe maybe it's more of like my no it just it's the the, the picture I have <laughs> no, is just of a just... kitchen exploding <laughs> now do you think do you think it's because you want to explode it because it's too stressful or do you think Mm. It feels like it's, it's just a not, it's not solvable. Like where, where do you know? Yeah. It, 
it feels like the only way to solve it is with a destruction of it. Uh. <laughs> because whatever is happening is not feasible and there is no other option and there's already so many other there's so many other decisions that have to be made Mm -hmm. and if this is if I'm getting stuck with the silverware then god help us all because (laughs) I am never going to get through this and so I might as well just like destroy the whole thing okay so like rage quit yes kind of yeah. And no, it is. It's like the, oh, is that a quick quit? Oh, quick quit. Remember we had the quick quit? Yeah, we had quick quit. But that's like, that's like when you just ignore it. That's not blowing yeah. stuff up. Like when no. you blow stuff up, I think you're rage quitting at that That's point. a rage quit. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, I don't have the thing I know I need or like I I had it before, but I don't have it now. Like I just get, yeah, you're right. I do get angry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rage quit. Rage quit. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So I mean, you've been doing this process and my favorite thing ever, okay, is that um, a good friend of mine, uh, you know, Cheryl at work. Yes, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. We love you. Um, Oh, by the way, she says she's excited to be part of our uh, book club. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Oh, by the way, everybody, we're going to be doing a book club roundtable and Heather, our our producer, is going to be facilitating, we think. Yes. We think she said yes to that, right, last week? Well, we, we hope. And so we, we think if we say it out loud. If we say it publicly, this, then she's going to have to do what, it, What else right? could she do? Yeah. I mean, right? Okay. Hey, sorry, Heather. You're you're it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. if you, our listeners, want to yeah. shout out in our podcast, our next podcast, you want to go to our Facebook page. Yeah. And you can make a little comment and then we'll shout you out too because we want to have more people who are listening. Yes saying hi to everybody we love you guys yeah so um yeah in our facebook you gotta remind me it's spicy brain studios page yep. okay spicy brain studios just like ter- type in spicy brain studios into your search bar and then our page should show up awesome okay so or our posts or whatever meta does meta so meta so meta anyway um she says to me sorry cheryl if you didn't want me to say this but she she like listened to the book this one that we're doing right now. And she was like, yeah, it sounds great. And I was like, yeah, Megan thought it sounded great too. And she started like nine months ago and now she finally has her Sunday basket. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like laughing because I thought that was so great. You said that the last time that it's been nine months and you're pondering this and you're thinking about this, but you're not in this, like I'm doing this exactly yet right it's yeah. your, it's iterative and and lisa which i've talks about that too in the book but like how long that iteration is might be different for everybody right but I, what i was thinking is is if every time you're trying to go do something that she's like recommending in the book and you want to explode your kitchen it yeah. could that could be hard yeah it's hard to want to come back to it for sure yeah because the the pain and frustration of those emotions doesn't make you really want to broach it. You're just like, I'll just forget about it. I'll just quick quit that one. Yeah, I'll quick quit it. I don't need to think about it. But you didn't do that this time, which I think is super cool because every other time you have organized something, I have been there. Yeah. I have been there organizing it or not. And now you have your new Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Um, <laughs> you have you have your person online, right? A little bit. Yep. And and you also are using the ADHD Focus Revolution. Focus Revolution. And that's been really helpful. So can you like walk us through your pantry? Like that's the example I wanted to talk a little bit more about. Cause it was, I think it's such a win. Yeah. And I know we talked about it before, but in terms of flexibility, I was kind of curious, like, how did you have to be flexible in terms of finishing that? And if you were able to, like, how might you have done that? I don't know. Yeah. No, I did have to be very flexible and it was very painful <laughs> to have to be that way uh, because, OK, so my I, I set up with the ADHD focus revolution and I'll put a link to it if anybody is looking for that. Um, and that's the group that you get online. Everybody's online together. Yeah. You set your your intention, your intention. or what you want to finish. And then you spend however many tomatoes, like that's units of time in our little yep. podcast world, right? So 25 minutes or 50 minutes or whatever the thing is, right? Okay. Yeah. And so I, I said I want to 
clean the pantry. And so there's like always a coach with you. And one the coach, coach Leslie was like, Oh my gosh, I love organizing. You can do this. That's so great. Go for it. And I was like, you love organizing, huh? I'm like, so direct message. Uh, so coach Leslie, <laughs> do you have any, I, any tips? And she's like, I do send me a picture. I'll tell you what to do. And I was like, yes. Okay, coach Leslie girl. and I are like a cut of the same cloth. We, yes. uh, I'm digging Coach Leslie already. Yeah, Coach Leslie is awesome. Like okay. she is, uh, she's she called she's called Mama Bear because she had like 17 uh, foster kids. Aww. You know, like she's just awesome. And so she's had to learn how to set things up and set systems up. Yeah. So I literally like was showing her video of my pantry, and she's looking around. And she's like, okay, so there, I see a lot of stuff. So let's get like, let's get all the stuff out and put them into broad categories. So you're going to put into like broad categories of like, these are all the pots and pans and like, Mm. these are all of the food and here's all. And then, so get it into those, those major big things first. Then once you have like all the pots and pans together, micro or like make a micro system classification or something. That's the word. Yep. Classification. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, and then, and then pare it down a little bit more so you know what you have okay give me like an example of one micro classification you came up with if you can remember well like i had uh like like the skillets versus pots oh okay great or i have like the lids versus the actual pots itself and so you have to figure out what do you do with the lids it's not just enough to put the pot somewhere you have to figure out what you do with the lids so true lids are a thing and i have just got used to now putting a little nail in the wall and then i hang the lid up on the nail Oh, that's so clever. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Okay. So so, I've been doing that now. So that's amazing. Okay. So that was an example of having to be flexible because that's not a normal thing people do. Oh, yeah. No. So then the next part of it was like, okay, well, now you got to put it back. And I I have this, what is that thing called? It's a a shelf that Mm. Mike gave us, like Mike gave me. Mm. And it it's like got a lot of deep space, but not a lot of shelves. And so I had to figure out, well, how can I utilize this space right now with what I have? Cause like in my mind, I would want to have an alpha system or something really Mm, beautiful. From the container store, like beautiful. You would be like Chloe, that one. I want to be Chloe Kardashian. No, I don't want to be that bad, but like, I want to be like more, yeah, the home edit, something where it's like, just, it looks really beautiful. Yeah. And so that flexibility was hard to like realize that I don't have that. And so I have to figure out, okay, well, what does that mean? And how am I going to focus what I have and make it work? Mm. So I did that. And, and this is the thing is like, I think it took me probably six or seven tomatoes just to like get everything out Mm. and organized. Yeah. And that's tiny. That's, that's tiring very tiring and so then I would sit in between some of the tomatoes and I would be like I would just sit there and kind of think about it and process it for a bit because it just was so overwhelming Mm -hmm. but then because of the ADHD focus revolution I was able to every 50 minutes they kind of for they well they kind of they force you to stop recognize your win Mm -hmm. take a break take a get some water, stretch, do something, dip, sit down for a second, whatever it is you need, mm-hmm. and then reestablish your goal. Wow. That's powerful. It really is. Because then yeah. you're not getting stuck mm-hmm. on these larger th- – you're not getting stuck. Mm. And so I, it took me quite a bit just to get the everything out. And I pulled, brought out a folding table – and I sort of put things in different places and I had stuff in the, the dining room and I had stuff on the kitchen counter and it was just a mess. And I then messaged Brian and said, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> the house is not going to be attractive for like the next day, but I will get it done. Oh, that's nice. I bet he really appreciated that. Yeah. Cause like I've had that, that folding table out before and it's not gone back into, <laughs> it's been <laughs> weeks before it goes back uh it gets put up so I I just had made this effort and so then I started putting things back and I was just trying different stuff I thought okay I I love it let's just do the let's do the wall first because anything I can hang on the wall will make things a lot easier and so I hung up all of my pots and pans in the pantry walls Mm. and then I I I hung up the the lids either below the pan or the pot that was that went with it so that because like some of them were 
seven inches and some were yeah, eight like, inches. Yeah, like I don't think like, to use my wall space really. That's cool. Yeah. Like in the and, pantry itself. That's kind of neat. Yeah. And so I was just, I just used my wall space there and that actually took care of a lot of the stuff. Like and then the I bulky kinda, stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then it gave me an opportunity to say, okay, well, what else do I have? And then I was like, okay, well, the, the way this shelf is that it's, it's got like metal, it's not like a flat surface, mm. right? Like it's not, it's, I mean, or uh, not flat. It's not a, it is, okay, it is flat, but it's not a like solid, solid. That's the right. One. It's not like a there's solid like surface. Root, like it's, it's got, it's like a wire. Yes. It's a wire shelf. Shelf. Yeah. So then there's other problems of things like falling through and whatnot. So then I had to like sit for a while with that one. And I just was like, what am I going to do? And I don't have the right thing. And I want my beautiful container store shelf. Okay, I don't have that. And so then after a while, I finally said, well, let's just go get some cardboard. Mm. And I laid some cardboard down. And is it the most attractive thing? No. no. But does it work? Yes. Sure. And it's done. And it's done. And then I realized I had all these like baking supplies that I kind of wanted to be able to, I didn't want to have them just like stacked. So I think I found a wire shelf like an extra one that was in the, was in a different pantry mm. that I hadn't been using. And so I used that to kind of like at least separate some of my cake tins. Okay. Um, so I want to dig into this though. Cause so I think that's amazing. Like, and I bet you that you could also post a picture of what you, the before and after, cause you have a before, um, which yeah. is always fun to see the before and after, but I want to kind of dig in. And one of the things that I know a lot of people have commented on with us is that you do dig in, in this, in these shows a little bit more into the emotions behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important because for me with flexibility, I, I think it's like sometimes there's an expectation that we're going to be flexible. And if you're not, and you have an emotional response to it, that's not okay either. Like you mm. can't, you know, not only do you have to be able to bend yourself into a pretzel for other people and, and be okay with whatever is, is in front of you, like you don't have the alpha system you want, but you're also not supposed to react, right, somehow. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just, you know, our society or our, what, how we, I, I don't know, right? But what does it feel like to you when you're in the middle and you're like, no, you don't have the thing you need? Like what's happening with, you know, I mean, even to get to the cardboard answer, what mm -hmm. might that have been like? I think... It started off with a quick quit mm. of like, I don't have the thing I need. And I just sort of numbed myself and it was just like, nope. And I just shut off. Yeah. And I kind of lost feeling of my body in that moment. Hmm. Like I'm not really, it, it's just like I'm standing there and I'm sort of this blank vessel and I'm staring at it and nothing is inspiring me or like, I'm not feeling my body. I'm not feeling anything hmm. and then I get mad at myself because I'm like I should this should like this shouldn't be this difficult or mm. you know I, I just I, I I do I berate myself for a few minutes because I've I, I I'm not responding the way I think I should respond mm -hmm. and then in the past I think I would have gone and let that whole thing derail me interesting but because I'm on Zoom with everybody and I know I have to check in in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I I take a minute and I, sit, I sat down mm. and I just thought like, okay, well, that's just as far as I'm going to get right now because like I don't know what else to do. And, and then I started like, once I sat down, I started feeling like my legs more because like I could actually focus on my legs and then I could feel a little bit more on my body and I had a drink of water and I, you know, just was like naturally breathing. So I think it just kind of took me a moment and I thought, okay, well, if I stop right now, then what does that mean for the stuff that I have out? Mm. I still have to put it back in somehow. So even if I, it's not the right way, like what could I do in the, in the, in the moment to just get through it and, and at least put the stuff back. And then mm. it's, I think, so I think for me, it was like just stopping this expectation of it has to be perfect. Mm. 
It just needs to be done. Interesting. But the first thing in order to even get to that place is that I had to find a way to start feeling in my body again. Because mm. I was completely numb. It was just like a natural response. Hmm. And so I think that whatever way you do that, if it's, you know, for me in that moment, it was sitting down. But like if you're sitting, maybe it's standing up. It's like just doing something different to like get in the body. Yeah. Get in your own body again. Ground yourself and kind of allow yourself to breathe. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing is like, I, you know, I was saying to you like, oh, I, I was naturally breathing because I hear all the time like, well, yeah, just, you know, take some breaths. And, mm -hmm. and actually like that, that actually makes me anx anxious. Yeah, you said that before. Of, you like yoga is not your thing because like, you're like, don't, don't make me breathe a certain don't way. Don't tell me how to breathe. Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't want you controlling my breath. <laughs> so for me, you know, like when they like it's sometimes it's nice to go through that with everybody and like have a little breathing session. But like when I am alone and I have to take care of myself, like the last thing I think of is to breathe mm -hmm. you know, a box breath. This is not my personal thing. But just like sitting for a moment and contemplating, I based, I think it's basically doing the same thing that the box breathing is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, just allowing myself to sit and, and like dangle my feet. Cause I have this like taller chair in the kitchen. And so like my feet were just dangling and I just was like moving my body a little bit, but I wasn't doing anything else. Mm. And I, I, I was drinking water. And I think just those little moments have like I've realized that that's that's exactly what I did every time I got stuck hmm. with the pantry is I would I would just walk away from it and sometimes I laid on my bed with my phone and just like did nothing for 15 minutes and just like scrolled on YouTube mm -hmm. or played a game or something like just to take my mind out of it but I still knew I had to get back to the people at the end of the hour because mm, you've made that commitment in that way to yourself yeah. and to them. Yeah. Interesting. That's and, so cool. And also, like, I think it could have also been, I think there might have been one session, like, where I didn't check in. Mm. I was like, I'm just too exhausted because I had been doing it for, like, four or five hours straight at that point. Sure. And so I didn't check in, which is fine. You can do that as well. And I just laid for 30 minutes. Mm. And I just rested my body and I knew like, I was like, if I, if I don't rest right now, then I am not going to be able to continue. It sounds like you were really like listening to yourself, you know, and honoring where you were at in that moment as well. I think in hindsight, yes. Hmm. <laughs> in the moment, I thought yeah. like, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. But now that I've seen it and seen the the aftermath of it, I realized, oh, that was me listening to myself. That was mm. me being kind to myself. And I actually finished it. Yeah. Whereas in the past, I would have just pushed straight through it and said, no, you can't, you can't do this, Megan. You can't do that. Like it has to be done a certain way. And instead of doing it that way, I actually just gave myself time and then mm. I did get it finished. And the other thing is that I, I specifically told Brian, I hit, I hit a certain point, like where I think it was like six or seven hours into it and I was not done. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was, I like, I just, I could feel it. Like, I just felt like, like, it's like, I feels like this, I don't know, like this veil just kind of lifts up above my eyes mm -hmm. into my brain. And then it's just like, nope, you're done. And when that hit, I knew I couldn't do any more that night. Because if I had tried to do any further or tried to push through it, it would wipe me out for like a week. Yeah. So I specifically told Brian, I was like, look, I'm leaving this because the, mind you, the table was right next to Brian's desk. <laughs> so, oh, no. So it made it a little difficult for him to get in, but he still could. And I said, look, I know this is here. I have to stop right now. Let me show you everything I've done. Mm. I have a plan for tomorrow. Mm, that's so nice and, though that that communication and being able to do that yeah yeah that's amazing I I wonder for like our community if other people have you know anything similar around that feeling of flexibility or not feeling flexible and and how they deal with that because it's interesting for me when I think about it I tend to just shut down and I shut off 
right? And I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then there's like this sort of almost robotic nature, I think, that I can have. You know, I mean, you've experienced it with me for sure. Um, mm. And so, but it ends up kind of building up usually, escalating. It comes out in other ways. Um, and I'm thinking about that, like if I was having to experience that every single day, all the time with what I perceive as like, regular decision making that has to like I, you know it's like and I don't mean that like easy decisions I just mean to say you have to make those decisions kind of decisions all day long yeah and now or have that flexibility to think of I could use this and this will be just fine and and to not to feel like if every single thing like that or many things like that might feel like I want to blow up the kitchen right <laughs> right <laughs> like how exhausting that would be Oh, to work it is exhausting. It. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I just am curious if like for other people in our community had strategies. Cause I like your strategy. I'm just gonna sit, I'm gonna drink some water, I'm gonna let my feet dangle, I'm gonna go lay down for a minute, I'll come back to it. But like you said, that hasn't been your MO in the past. No, in the past I think I would have shh, like my fists would the fists of fury yeah. would have come. Yeah. Because that's actually the first image I had in my head was like, oh, yeah, the fists of fury. Mm -hmm. But that's not what happened when we dealt with the pantry. Like, I didn't have the fists of fury because I had support. Mm. You had the right kind of support, too. Yeah. Because you and I have done that before and fists of fury have come out because I wasn't the right type of support. Right. Because it, it is. Yeah. And I mean, I don't mean that as any, you know, anything against me specifically yeah. but I just like I really wasn't understanding how visceral at the time when we would do this I think now I think as we've done things more recently like in the last year or so I think it's been better but yeah it's like that taking that moment to sit and relax like that's not your strategy which is totally fine but like for me it's like I have to have that those few minutes like probably for I, I don't I don't know if this, I shouldn't, you're here, you can speak for yourself, but like, <laughs> you know, whenever I would want to take a break, it's like, okay, we just got to push through, you know? And, yeah. and that wasn't, that wasn't helpful for me. No, not at all. And for me, it's like, I have to push through sometimes to, to keep going. Otherwise yeah. I might like really not finish, I feel like, or I have a fear of it maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I think what's really interesting, Michelle, is that I th we were talking was it last weekend and you know like my my room is not cleaned up the way I want it to be cleaned right right now mm -hmm. and you were talking to me about something and like hey what could you do and what was that and I was just like I don't know and I'm just oh. I was like just being a bum yeah. and and the cool thing was you were like I saw you take a second you're like okay you know what you just gotta do what you're gonna do like you're not ready to deal with it right now. And I was like, you're right. I'm not ready to deal with it right now. And you're like, when you're ready, you'll yeah. deal with it. And yeah. like, and that was that. And I was like, dang, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> I'm working you, on it. Thank you. It's, it is not easy because it's, it's definitely, I think we were talking about like, how will our relationship change? And yeah. to me, it's like mostly for the better. Um, is, is what I would say about that. But it is different when you're kind of in a caretaking role for someone who has, you know, a beautiful brain that you're trying to, you think is supposed to try to be fitting in some mold and you're been, you've been sort of tasked or feel that you have this task to try to help them become other. Right. Yeah. And, and it's so relieving and freeing you know, I think we talk about this with Heather quite a lot um, about really there, you don't need to change a single thing about yourself. Yeah. You know, you might need to learn to be kinder to yourself or, um, you know, learn how your how it works best for you, but you really don't need to change anything about yourself. And, and I think that I was always coming from a place of thinking that something needed to change a little bit and mm -hmm. or that I needed to help you to evolve to the next whatever it was. And that's just such a very limited way of thinking in a sense. 
um, an inflexible way of thinking. And I think that it's this- also not uncommon, Michelle. I mean, that is, no. that is like what our society teaches yeah. us. I mean, how many times do you hear uh, couples, you know, like couples teaching each other, like, hey, I don't need you to fix this. I just need you to listen, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, even in just, plutonic relationships and familial relationships it's the same way we just we want to fix things because we love the people so much and we don't want to see them hurt yeah and so we want to fix it for them and sometimes the thing that they need the most is just to be validated and and listened and cared for absolutely absolutely and and that can be difficult to do you know yeah. i mean it, it really can be because you're watching somebody and you're like oh my god are they dangling off a cliff or like what's happening and and the reality is you can't fix all those things you can't you can't but you can support and you can learn and you can be curious for sure. Yeah. And I'm curious really, truly um, what other strategies people might have because I can't imagine, I mean, I don't feel this way about my kitchen, but I, I feel so much empathy for the fact that that even that, that amount of frustration is something you deal with on the regular. And I, yeah, I mean, I just think like you're amazing. <laughs> You get, right? Like you're literally amazing that you're Thank finding you. ways to work through this because that's really a lot. And and it's yeah. visceral. It's it's part of your body. It's part of your, all of it, right? It, it affects you on a cellular level, I think. All of us, I think it affects all of us on a cellular level. Just maybe yours, maybe it's a little proportionally more than mine. Well, it's also like if I had to, if I've, I've had to bottle all those visceral moments up, that's why I had so many, physical mm. issues because it's good it has to come out somehow if like your body is if my body is physically being uh, I want to say attacked or altered but it's not it's like it's being um my body is being physically hit or there's a visceral reaction right it's it's in my mm-hmm. body something is changing heart rate or you know at the cellular level things are changing and so if it doesn't if it's not allowed to come out, then it will eventually come out. It's just like a pressure filled bottle. Yeah. Eventually the cap will like explode. Yeah. And I like the idea of you saying that you were just even moving a little bit with your legs swinging. Um, You know, I've been learning a lot about um, TRE and it's, it's basically Mm -hmm. was sort of introduced for people after, um, you know, being in, in highly stressful, like war situations, but is for everyone. And this idea that all animals kind of shake and little mm. kids, like if you see them in war zones, they'll be shaking. And that's mm. that's actually a, a natural response that we untrain out of our bodies. And so this idea that and it actually it's actually helping to like heal the the tissue and get the energy out and all of those things. And it's really, really fascinating work. I just took a session on it and have been, been trying it. Um, and it's, it's amazing, uh, actually. Yeah. So I kind of wonder too, when you say that you would say like stuff would get trapped in your body and that, that we are by not moving, by, not, by keeping ourselves still and rigid all day on computers and doing all this, we're not just naturally getting things out. We aren't. And yeah. it's, you know, when I think about like, fidgeting mm-hmm. and I kept telling you like it feels like it, it's a lightning rod like I just I have to have some way to get the energy out and like I shake my legs you know like and, yeah and it would make sense like if obviously we don't I don't know for certain but like if I am constantly experiencing these sort of emotional landmines every day yes then it would make sense why I would want to shake my legs or why I want to shake my feet you know like have a my foot going up and down or something mm-hmm. to help it kind of soothe me yeah I think it's soothing and it's also something about like actually getting the energy out right like it's like the actual energy somehow needs to get out of your body so it's interesting that I think some of the things that we might have said were um, problems for you were actually things that you didn't uh, you never stopped your ne- your body of your nature from doing. You talk a lot yeah. about body of nature versus body of nurture and nature being what's naturally occurring and nurture being what we're trained to do. And I think your body of your nature is actually much more in tune than maybe maybe some others. So I anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you some links about it because I think it's kind of interesting um, work and you might you might like it in some that ways. That is really really mm-hmm. fascinating. I mean, and 
when you look at like Newton's law of physics, right? Like to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So like if something energetic, this is why I say like the one thing I believe in is physics because if (laughs) something enters my body energetically, it has to get out. Yeah. And I don't know what's happening. Like, on a, like, but I just, I know it's, I can feel it. Like if I feel something come, like I have to, it, I have to recoil or I have to, something has to occur in order for it to bounce off of me. And I think a lot of our sicknesses tend to revolve around us, not expressing and not, you know, getting our it out. Just, yeah. Our bodies are just trapped in it. Yeah. And I love like you're finding ways to sort of get, it out through community, through, you know, self-care, through looking at different ways, you know, different structures, different ways to do things. Um, I think it's, it's really cool. Yeah. The there's journey you're one, on. There's not just one way, one thing that's going to make it all better. That's no. what I've, like, I want to have like a magic pill or just the magic, <laughs> the magic thing. I just Wouldn't do this so one good? thing. Oh, it'd be so great. And I think that's also why she says in this book, it's like, not, it's about progress, not perfection. And yeah. I think that's such a really true statement that it's about us progressing, learning more, trying something on, seeing how it works and not, not, and you always say this, not shitting all over yourself. Not shitting all over yourself. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have been better at this, whatever it is. That's right. It's so good. You don't have anything that like you just get, you want to blow up? Oh my God. Lots of things. Absolutely. I wanted this whole episode to be about me, but of course, (laughs) you know, what are we supposed to say? No. Yeah. Of course. (laughs) Mine just, mine just don't happen to be around physical things very often. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's weird, but for me, it's around people or around processes or around like, you know, I get so frustrated with sometimes the inflexibility of certain things. And then sometimes I get frustrated that there is no structure. Right. So it's like, I'm on both ends of the spectrum with that for sure. But, oh, absolutely. I get completely frustrated. And I do remember talking actually to Josh about this the other day, um, you know, your nephew, my son, um, about when he was little and his emotions. Mm -hmm. And I get, I tend to get really frustrated when people aren't flexible with their emotions too like they can't just move on from something and of course you know that's not our family really like in general and probably most people uh but I remember he would get so upset you know about whatever when he was like two or three and I remember having to just it's funny you said sit down I would sit down because you know the other thing too is like when you're a parent the kid when they're little you're so big So if you're mad and you're upset, like how scary for them, right? And so I started to do this thing where I would just sit in the middle of the kitchen and I would let him scream and do whatever he was going to do because that's what two-year-olds do. And I would just breathe and I would sit there and just breathe and like until I could stop seeing red, you know, so to speak, I would just like be like, okay, but that required a lot of flexibility on my part that I didn't have. Before, I mean, I would just escalate, escalate, escalate with everybody in my life. And so I, he taught me how to be more flexible with that, Mm. but it was painful and it was hard and it was, I wasn't good at it at the beginning. And I had to keep, you know, I had to keep practicing that. And I, and I, I sort of see what you were saying as sort of a practice, like this is, a practiced thing that you're going, you're, you're working on, right. Which is allowing this flexibility in. So yes, I have many things that I rage quit on. When you see red. Yeah. Like what, how does it feel in your body? Um, I think, you know, I was listening to hidden brain today and I was thinking, I think it's that like sort of reptilian side of yourself that comes out where you're like, your arm is no longer your arm. It's a weapon, you know? And Mm. I think that for me is something that was always very scary was that if I could go there, what would that look like? What would that mean? What would, what would I do? Right. And so I think I have that, I have that ability to go there. I think everyone does to some degree, but it's just like how easily you access it. But for me, that's definitely an area. And and with a child, you know, like that's not okay, right? You just cannot yeah. do that. So, 
you know, then it's like, okay, well then what do I do with that feeling of I'm gonna, you know, I mean, cause like, how can it be right? When you think about it really, like what you're going to go fisticuffs with a two-year-old, I mean, you know, <laughs> right. No. So, I mean, but it feels like that in my body. It's like every cell in my body is wanting me to act in some mm-hmm. way that I know isn't going to be helpful or it could be harmful. And, um, you know, I don't usually like put myself in situations where I'm even going to get close to that anymore. But before I had boundaries around that, that was easier for me to go there. Right. I had experienced that in my life. I'd experienced rage at me. I knew how to rage back and I had to really work on that. And that, that was, so it feels when I said seeing red, it's like, it feels like my, all my cells are boiling over and I don't have Mm. any place for that energy to go in a constructive way. You know, they tell you go hit a pillow or go take a run or go do whatever. But I think for me, I realized I just need to, as best I can, not be in those situations. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, like, and then with a lot of therapy, there's less things that trigger me. You know, there's less things where I get, you know, I can think it through and I have that ability. and, And I think that's, that's been good, but it's definitely difficult sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for talking with me today. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Spicy Brain Podcast brought to you by Spicy Brain Studios. This episode, we are continuing our new series, diving into the strategies for home organization through the book, How ADHD Affects Home Organization by Lisa Woodruff. We hope you enjoyed us navigating our neurodivergent brains through curiosity, joy, and radical acceptance. Please take a moment to share the episode with someone you think could benefit from this conversation. You know, sharing these episodes really helps us to continue bringing new episodes and building better content for you. Also, don't forget to follow us on whatever platform you're currently listening to so that you can get notified each week for our new episodes. Now, next week, we'll be diving into what working memory is and how there really is no such thing as multitasking. I always knew that it was a total line of BS. But until then, here's to a great end of the week. And remember, stay curious.